This video is sponsored by Eralo. Hi everyone, Ta here. So when you're buying phones these days, it really boils down to what software experience you prefer. Someone who loves One UI is always going to feel like anything other than a Samsung is not feature-packed enough. Whereas someone who prefers a cleaner, smarter Android experience is likely gonna cringe at anything other than a Google Pixel. So I'm a firm believer that you can always learn something from everyone. We as customers benefit when big brands like Google and Samsung borrow ideas from each other. I don't care who did it first, just give me the best features. Today, I wanted to do a little comparison between an aspect of phones that doesn't typically get too much attention during reviews. The lock screen. Who does it best, Google or Samsung? Let's start with the Pixel. Just below the clock, the Pixel features the Google at a glance widget, which displays the date, current weather, and a whole bunch of other info when it's needed or relevant. Things like upcoming calendar events, active timers, traffic info before leaving for work, and even alerts for earthquakes. I like that it puts important and relevant information right there in front of you on the lock screen. The at a glance widget is of course available on all Android devices, but it's not as feature rich and definitely isn't available on the lock screen like it is on Pixels. Another distinctive lock screen feature for Pixel phones is now playing, which automatically identifies songs playing nearby and displays the song and artist name right on the lock screen just below the fingerprint scanner. It's a nice little feature that's done completely offline, so you don't even need to be connected to the internet. There's apparently a workaround to get now playing on other Android phones, but technically this is a Pixel exclusive. When you hear people rave about how smart the Pixel devices are, the two features I just mentioned are definitely a small part of what they're talking about. Samsung takes a slightly different approach when it comes to lock screen info. They offer something called lock screen widgets. You can access these by tapping on the clock and in here you essentially have a list of widgets that showcase helpful info like the weather, monthly calendar, plus upcoming events and a few other things. You can decide which widgets to enable and the order they show up in. So I've been using Galaxy phones for a long time and truthfully, I always forget that these lock screen widgets are a thing. Hiding them behind an extra tap just isn't as intuitive to me. Be honest, how many of you even knew this was a thing? The only thing I wish Samsung would add to the actual lock screen is a way for me to see the current weather forecast. Right now, what I do is use the weather edge panel. It's only a single swipe away and gives you a bit more weather data like humidity and UV index. But yeah, I still like an option to show weather data right on the lock screen. Besides checking notifications, playing, pausing, scrubbing, and skipping tracks is the next big thing that I do from the lock screen. Hands down, the better looking media controls goes to the Pixel. It does a better job showcasing album art, and I like the more pronounced play pause button. A weird thing I notice on my Samsung is that the moment I receive a notification, you lose functionality from the music player. You can no longer scrub music tracks or switch audio output if there's any sort of notification. With no notifications, those functions come back. There's no way that's done on purpose, right? When it comes to lock screen customization though, this is where Samsung really shines. If you're all about customizing how your phone looks, the Samsung offers so much more. The only visual customization the Pixel currently offers is the ability to enable a big two line clock when you don't have any notification. Pixels also offer a collection of live wallpapers that you can use as your lock screen wallpaper. But Samsung lets you use literally any video on your phone as the lock screen wallpaper. It just has to be trimmed down to 15 seconds or less. If you want to get really crazy with it, the Wonderland app from Good Luck lets you create super cool custom live wallpapers with all sorts of effects. There's a bunch of pre-made ones to give you some inspiration, but you can easily create a new one from scratch. So for example, we'll just start with this picture of a tree trunk right here and it's winter right now. So why don't we just add some snow and there we go. Okay, that turned out a lot nicer than I thought it would. You can have a lot of fun with this. On top of that, if you long press the lock screen, you can change the clock style, sizing, transparency of notifications, and even switch up the app shortcuts. On the Pixel, you're only given the option to enable access to Google Home and Google Wallet as app shortcuts, 
but nothing else. If you're all in on Google services, then you probably love this and it makes total sense that Google would want to have their services front and center. But I'd love to see Google offer a little bit more flexibility. Give me an option for the flashlight or even the calculator. Another difference between these app shortcuts is how you activate them. With Google, it launches with a tap, while Samsung opts for a swipe. Now, I haven't even touched on Lockstar yet either, which is a first-party Samsung app that just takes customization to a whole nother level. For example, you can move the media controls closer to the bottom or add a whole bunch of app shortcuts. It's freedom that you just don't get with the Pixel. Speaking of freedom, before your next travel adventure, you gotta check out today's sponsor, Eralo. Eralo is the world's first eSIM store that provides affordable connectivity for when you travel. I wish I'd known about this for my international travels in the past before I had this little one. It would have saved me a lot of time and money. Those data roaming charges are no joke and hunting for free Wi-Fi all the time can be downright exhausting. Eralo makes it super easy and convenient to stay connected while traveling. With an eSIM compatible device, just download the Aralo app, select your Destination Plus plan, activate the moment you arrive, and boom, instant connectivity, it's that easy. They offer eSIMs covering over 200 different countries and regions, or get a global one and be covered in multiple countries and regions. You can manage everything within the app, including keeping an eye on your data usage or adding more data if needed. Stop juggling with the hassle of multiple physical SIMs. Before your next trip, download the Aralo app or visit aralo.com. Both Samsung and Google, of course, offer an always on display that works as an extension of the lock screen, displaying the time, music info, notifications, if you have any, and battery percentage. In usual Samsung fashion, they offer a variety of customization options. You can choose when the always on display is displayed, including a scheduled option, which is nice if you only need it for work hours. They also offer a variety of clock styles and color schemes. The month calendar and upcoming schedule clock are a couple of my personal favorites since I'm so reliant on my calendar to not forget things. If none of these styles speak to you, downloading the Clockface app from Good Luck unlocks a whole bunch more and opens up the ability for you to create and design your own from scratch. Oh, and you remember those lock screen widgets? Yeah, you can actually access them by double tapping the clock and swiping up or down. This kind of feels a little unnecessary, especially on the always on display, but hey, you can do it. All right, so between One UI and Pixel UI, which lock screen do I like better? Ideally, I'd like a mix of both, but as is, I think I'm gonna have to give it to the Pixel. While I do appreciate all the extra customization and flexibility that Samsung adds, I like the more measured and focused approach that Google has taken, at least on the lock screen. They both get the job done, but having the at a glance and now playing integration just makes the Pixel's lock screen feel more helpful. Showing me relevant info as needed without me having to tap or do anything is something I really appreciate. Samsung's edge panel and lock screen widgets provide more functionality, but the extra taps and swipes just feels slightly less intuitive. Losing function from the media controls whenever you have notifications is a little frustrating too. But hey, I totally understand why someone would choose Samsung's lock screen over the Pixel. The customization is seriously cool, and it gives you the ability to make your phone feel like a one of one. Obviously, a software comparison between these two Android skins goes way beyond just the lock screen. Heck, you might not even use your lock screen at all. So if you enjoyed this and want to see me compare other aspects in similar detail, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to make it happen. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, I'm out of here. Bye!